Scotland is a country with a mystical and ghostly past. Tales of bloody clan battles and family curses still resonate within the stones of its ancient castle walls. Ghosts lurking behind secret doors, waiting for just the right moment to reveal themselves, perhaps when we least expect it. These are the stories of Scotland. Supernatural tales of fierce loyalty, personal sacrifice, and cruelest betrayal. Have you ever wondered what they would say if the walls could talk? In Scotland, it is said sometimes they do. Phantom hammering in the dark of the night, moans of pain and loneliness emanating from hidden rooms, whispers of secrets around every corner. Duntroon Castle stands on the west coast of Scotland in the region of Argyll. It is a fortress built more than 800 years ago to guard the surrounding countryside against raiders from across the sea. Now a peaceful home, it was once the scene of bitter clan fighting. To this day, Duntroon is said to be haunted by the spirit of a lone piper whose heroic deed and loyalty to his clan brought him to a gruesome end. The sound of Scottish pipes has haunted the castle for many years, summoning memories of Duntroon's brutal past. But it is not only the pipes that seem to haunt Duntroon. Furniture has been seen moving on its own, and objects have been known to hurl themselves at the walls. Clocks stop, and a horrible discovery has been unearthed from beneath the castle's stones. To understand the hauntings at Duntroon, we must return to its violent past. In the 1600s, Duntroon was owned by the powerful Campbell clan. The Scots were divided by civil war. The Campbells fought on the side of Parliament, and their mortal enemies, the Macdonalds, supported King Charles I. Hearing that most of the Campbells were away from Duntroon, Carl Quito, a Macdonald chieftain, took advantage of the situation and attacked the castle. When the McDonald's had secured the castle, Quito sailed off to continue his campaign. He left behind a small garrison and his lawyer Piper to guard the castle. The Campbells were determined to retake their castle from the McDonald's. In Quito's absence, they mounted a counterattack. Eventually, the Campbell clan recaptured Duntroon. Only one MacDonald was spared, the Piper. As privileged individuals, Pipers were protected. 
Imprisoned and surrounded by enemies, the Piper knew that his master would return to meet an almost certain death. The Piper scanned the horizon for his master's boat, desperate to find a way of warning him. At last, the Piper saw their boat on the horizon, and he did the only thing he could do to warn his master. He began to play his pipes. At first, Kito thought the piper was playing a tune of welcome, but as he came closer, he heard the tune become more urgent. And understanding it was a warning to leave, he turned the boat around and sailed to safety. When the Campbells realized that there had been a message in the piper's tune, they decided upon a punishment they felt would fit the crime. Brutally, they cut off his hands so he could play no more. The Piper died from his wounds. Those who thought the story to be merely a local myth were quite shocked when, in about 1880, a chilling discovery was made beneath the castle flagstone. Hey, John! Look at this. What do you find, Jimmy? Look. Oh, how long that The workmen had found a skull, and when more stones had been removed, much to everyone's amazement, a full skeleton was revealed. Conspicuously missing his hands. At long last, the myth of the Duntroon Piper had been proven. A single standing stone marks the spot where the skeleton is said to have been buried. It is known only as the Piper's grave. But though he is nameless, his courageous act has immortalized him, the Piper of Duntroon, who, perhaps to this day, waits loyally at his post for his clan to return. The Scots are people with strong traditions. They have always held a deep respect for the unseen forces of nature and unexplained occurrences that have been part of their history from the dawn of memory. On the east side of Scotland, in the Grampian region north of Aberdeen, stands Fivey Castle. Fivey is steeped in mystery and strange, terrifying tales. It is a castle with a disturbed soul. It is said the ghost of a betrayed wife, the Green Lady, walks Fivey's long corridors to this day. One afternoon, while totally alone in the castle tower, an army man, rather skeptical of the supernatural, entered Fivey's drawing room. As he stepped aside to let someone pass, he was quite startled when he realized no one was there. The Green Lady is thought to be the ghost of Dame Lilius Drummond. In the early 17th century, the owner of the castle was Alexander Seaton, Lord Fivey. He lived in the castle with his wife, Dame Lilius, but Seaton was not happy with her. They had five daughters, but Lilius had not given him the son and heir he longed for. Relatives of Dame Lilius lived nearby. Among them, a beautiful young woman named Griselle. Seaton fell passionately in love with her. Suddenly, Dame Lilius was reported unwell, and within months, she passed away. Whispered rumors about how Lilius had died echoed around the castle. Seaton, they said, had locked his wife up in an upstairs room.
Alone and without nourishment, Lily has perished. Only weeks after his wife's suspicious death, Seton married Grizel. According to legend, however, Dame Lilius would soon return. On their wedding night, Seton and his new wife heard the sound of heavy sighing from outside the window. Seton tried to calm Grizel's fears by telling her that it was only the wind. He opened the window and looked out, but the night was still. Seton again assured his young bride that there was no need to worry. Good night, go to sleep. But as the night wore on, the sounds coming from the window grew louder and more human, like the cries of a woman in despair. Morning light, Grizel cautiously approached the window. What she saw next terrified the young girl. Something had been carved on the window ledge. In letters nearly three inches high and inscribed from the outside, were the words D. Lilius Drummond. The words that perhaps were written by a ghostly hand remains there to this very day. The deadly curse that may still be afflicting people today are whispered of in the halls of Fivey. Ivy Castle was built 200 years before Columbus came to America. Its ancient walls have weathered the century as well, but along the way it has collected a history of betrayal and treachery, so intense that it seems even now to deeply affect the lives of those who dare to stick. Another ominous presence hangs over Ivy Castle. It is known as the Curse of the Weeping Stones. More than 500 years ago, an ill-tempered prophet named Thomas the Rhymer, renowned for his gloomy predictions, announced he wanted to visit the castle. In anticipation of his arrival and to welcome him, the castle's great doors were left open. Years passed and Thomas had not come. Still, the door stood open. Seven years and a day after he had first announced his intention to visit the castle, Thomas arrived. Talk about fashionably late. But, as he approached the entrance, a freak storm blew in, slamming the door in his face. Always quick to take offense, Thomas took this as a personal insult and cursed the castle and its lands. The curse spoke of three stones taken from the boundary markers of the castle lands. Until all three stones were found and reunited, the firstborn sons of the families that lived at Fivey would never inherit the castle. The alleged curse is so powerful that the one weeping stone that has been recovered still exerts an evil influence. Christopher Hartley came under the stone spell when he was working on its conservation and display. And it was strange that every time I seemed to be closely working with it, 
Shortly after, something terrible happened to me. The first time, having worked very closely with the stone, I twisted my ankle. And so did the surveyor, who had also seen it on the same occasion. The next time, I sprained my knee very badly. And the third time, when I put it into a showcase, I was rushed to hospital in the middle of the night with kidney stones. I don't like to look at the stone anymore or go too close to it at all. I try to avoid it if I can. The Weeping Stone also has remarkable and unexplained physical properties, which explain its name. Although kept in dry conditions, in a wooden bowl, the stone actually weeps, filling the bowl with moisture. Is there really a curse on Fivey Castle? Perhaps. Perhaps not. But there is one castle that is reputed to be more haunted and breathing with spirits than all others in Scotland. <coughs> Scotland has many castles that some believe still contain living history. Spirits with unfinished stories, entities that have secrets to share, and beings that wish to stay in the homes where they were once happy. Glamis is the most infamous of the many Scottish castles reputed to be haunted. Glamis Castle has a mythical and certainly mystical reputation. The ghosts of Glamis are numerous and legendary. Phantoms have been reported in the castle for centuries. Many of these hauntings are focused on the bedroom known as the Blue Room. One account, recorded in the 1870s, described the event. A guest at the castle, the wife of the Archbishop of York, was staying in the Blue Room. She awoke feeling that something had brushed her face, but she couldn't see anyone in the room. A figure loomed over her, with a long, flowing beard and the face of a dead man. In 1454, Patrick, the first Lord Glamis, was said to have played host to an evil visitor at the castle. He was known for his love of gambling and often played cards with Earl Beardy of Crawford, so called because of his long, thick beard. The pair were playing together late one Saturday night when a servant entered and reminded them of the hour. It was nearly the Sabbath and gambling was forbidden on the Lord's Day. We no bother me, man. Can you not see him in the middle of a game? But the men ignored him and played on. But five minutes to midnight, the servant again entered and pointed out the time. My lords, please, I beg you. If we have a mind to, we shall play until doomsday. Earl Beardy roared. He would regret his words. On the stroke of midnight, the door opened. A mysterious stranger entered. The stranger sat down and placed a stake of sparkling rubies on the table. The three men started to play. Lord Glamis and Earl Beardy soon got into a heated argument. The stranger watched. The sounds from the room became loud and furious. And the servant longed to enter and see what was happening. But as he approached the door, he reeled back in terror. The two gambling men were enveloped in flames. That night, the castle had entertained the one known to people of that time as the Prince of Darkness. 
two men were condemned by the dark spirit to play until doomsday at the price for gambling on the Sabbath. Do specters from another world coexist with us in this one, never intending to be seen by us at all? If we listen very carefully, might we hear voices or music drifting toward us from another time and place? In the ancient and magical land that is Scotland, some still believe they can. <laughs>